Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna take another look at probability and we're gonna see can we set up an area model to help us answer a question. So let's go ahead and jump into this example problem where I have two spinners shown to the right that are spun. Now if the letters match when you spin them, you win, otherwise you lose. You wanna find out what's the probability that you win. It says to complete the area model below to help you solve the problem and to show all calculations that lead to your results. So we have an area model there. We have the bare bones of it, right? We want to set it up so that we can help us solve this problem. We want to know what's the chance of matching up the A's, the B's, the C's all together. It's kind of tricky on your own. So that's why an area model is going to help us figure this out. So with area model, we have our two events, one on the top, one on the side. Well, our two events here are spinner number one and spinner number two. So we need to figure out what our outcomes are. Where with spinner number one, I see that my possible outcomes end up being A, B, or C. And I think that that's the exact same thing for spinner number two here. I'll label this spinner number one, and then this guy spinner number two. And this guy is also going to be A, B, and C. Now notice that this area model is not going to be helpful unless we have those ratios, those probabilities of each letter next to our letters there. So for spinner number one, what is the chance of getting an A? Well, I look at spinner number one and it tells me that the chance of getting an A is one fourth. B has a chance of three over eight and C also has a chance of three over eight. Perfect. Now let's set up spinner number two. Spinner number two, chance of getting an A is one half. So I'll write one half underneath. B and C both end up being one fourth. Now we are not at all yet done with setting up our area model. All we've done is set up the sides, which is good. It's what we want. We want each letter, we want each fraction so that we can fill in the inside of our area model. If we can fill in the inside there, it's gonna help us solve this problem. So let's go ahead and do that. To fill in this spot here, all we do is we look at the sides that make up this box and we multiply them. So I'm gonna take 1 fourth times 1 half and that's gonna give me 1 over 8. We do that all the way through this area model. For this guy, it's 3 eighths times 1 half and 3 eighths times 1 half gives us 3 over 16. And over here, I think it's the same deal. 3 8 times 1 half. So we're gonna get 3 over 16. Let's keep working through this. All right, 1 fourth times 1 fourth. That gives me 1 over 16. 3 8 times 1 fourth is going to give me 3 over uh, 32. And then 3 8 times 1 fourth is gonna again give me 3 over 32. One more row to figure out. So this bottom one is, oh look, 1 fourth times 1 fourth again, so 1 16th, 3 eighths times 1 fourth, still 3 over 32, and we end with again 3 over 32. Now, we have our area model all filled out. And you might be thinking, okay, we answered the question, we're good. But no, we still haven't answered the question. The question says, what's the probability that you win? Well, how do you win? Well, you win, if the letters match. So now we need to go through our area model and we need to find out all of those fractions inside, which one of them correspond with you winning the game, with your letters matching. We'll start with the top left. This is when you spin an A on the first and an A on the second. So I am very interested in that 1 8 fraction. Let's look for when you match the Bs. There's my first B, there's my second B. They're matching up here on the three over 32. Again, finally, when do your C's match? I think it's gonna end up being this diagonal and all three of those fractions are when you're going to win. So again, still not done, right? We haven't answered the question. What's the probability that you win? Well, I know matching A's is 1 8, matching B's is three over 32, and matching C is also three over 32. So how are we gonna figure this out? Well, we write it this way. The probability that you're going to win is taking all three of those fractions and what we need to do 
is we need to add them together. We add them together and then we'll figure out what our probability is. Now, before we can add fractions, remember we have to have a common denominator. So I'm looking here and I see that they don't have a common denominator yet, but I do notice that these two on the right hand side already have 32 as the bottom denominator. I think what might be helpful for us here is changing the first fraction to have a denominator of 32. And while I'm looking at that, eight does go into 32. Eight goes into 32 four times. So I just have to multiply the top and bottom by four and that will turn that fraction into four over 32. At this point, we can definitely add all three of those fractions together. Remember when we add fractions, we don't add the denominators, we just add the numerators, the ones on top. So four plus three is seven, seven plus three is 10. So what's the probability of you winning this game? It is 10 out of 32, but let's reduce when we can. I think two goes into 10 and 32. Two goes into 10 five times. 32, uh, two goes into 32 16 times. So we'll write it out this way. The probability of you winning is 5 16 You always wanna reduce when possible, but that is a complete area model showing you how to pull the information out, right? Filling out the area model is not answering the question, but it helps you set up getting your answer. You gotta get the information from the box method. Once you have that, add up your fractions and you're good to go. It's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.